welcome back to Connected. This is about classroom management. And my promise to you, as always, is it will only be 25 minutes. We'll start our timer and get going. Okay, good teaching. As we know, good teaching is the result of conscious engagement. It makes your environment meaningful to students. And you guys are fantastic at that. Our goal here at Matthews is going to be to start small, seek out new information, and ask friends. It's okay to not know. So our goal is to start small. The goal of our learning is to become experts and for our students to become experts. Managing technology. Today we're going to talk about how to manage technology in your classroom, but we're not going to talk necessarily about rules and about a, a list of expectations for your students. You will be creating those on your own, but it's going to be more individualized to your classroom management style and your students. It may even look different from year to year. So we're not going to go into specific rules that you need to put inside in place in your classroom. We're instead going to talk about how to manage the actual technology piece itself within your planning and within your day-to-day. -day. And the biggest thing about management is modeling. So if you're modeling these things to your students, they will be picking up on what they see from you. And if you're modeling correct behaviors with your technology in front of them, they're going to fall in line also. And as we know, technology is very engaging. So it's going to be a natural engagement for your students when used correctly and modeled correctly. So all of your how-to procedures, they're just going to fall into place as you model. Sandbox time is going to be one of the most exciting times for your students as the year gets started and for you as well. Sandbox time is a time for you to introduce new tools and new programs to your students and give them time to just play. If you let them have this playtime up front, they're going to find all the cool things their technology program can do, all of the cool tools. They're going to have a good time with it. So when the time comes for you to ask them to choose a tool to use, they're already going to know which one they're experts at and which one they enjoy the most. And that playtime will be done. They'll be ready to be engaged and just start using the tool as it's intended to help their learning. You will also find that experts will start popping up in your classroom once that technology gets spread out. Experts will naturally start rising in your classroom. Use your experts. You do not have to be the go-to for all technology management, especially you fourth graders, you fourth grade kiddos. They are so excited about being experts. Use them. Let them be an expert. You could have experts for logging in. You could have experts for this tool. You could have experts in slides. You could have experts in this website. Different experts, different things. Different children will rise up and become experts in different areas. There may not be one that is an expert in everything, and that's okay. They may be good at something else. So give kiddos opportunity to be experts and to help others around them. All right. The next thing we want to talk about when implementing this technology inside of our classroom is uh, your structure in your classroom. Your classrooms may look different once you have all this technology in your room and you're able to let them collaborate and have their own piece traveling around the room with them. You may want to set up your classroom just a little bit differently <coughs> and that's okay. That is wonderful. Be flexible with where you allow your students to use their technology. Be flexible with that. If they need to sit on the floor to work with their partner, let them sit on the floor to work with their partner. If you need to shove all of your desk into a corner and just set up stations, learning stations that are comfy for them, do it. Meet your students' needs. Every class will be different. Every year will be different. You all know this already. And this is going to be a fun part of being able to change up your classroom structure because of the travel capabilities of your technology device. Remember, classroom management is not device specific. It does not matter what device is in your room. 
management will look the same. All right. <laughs> okay, engagement is the key. And right now, even without technology, our Nixa teachers are so good at engaging students. You're going to continue to use those same classroom management, that non-technology classroom that you have now. You're going to continue to use those management skills you already have in place, but now you have technology to put right there inside with it. So make sure when you do use the technology, it, is, it has a purpose so your students will stay interested and engaged. The technology will not be just to pull out the technology to show you're using it. It needs to have a purpose. There will be different tools, different websites that will fit for different types of opportunities. Um, there are some great resources out there on apps online that can help you find different tools to fit the different learning styles and also to fit the different levels of the Bloom's Taxonomy. I know a teacher just recently they found some great tools for that so we'll be getting that out to you also remember student voice and choice is very important when utilizing the technology through that sandbox time your kiddos will become experts at different tools they'll have things they like better they'll have things there that are easier for them and they're more fluent with some kiddos may want to make a slideshow to show you their knowledge some kiddos may want to record themselves using their uh, camera on their device. Some kiddos may want to put together a song for you. Give them voice and choice when using their technology. It should not be about everybody create a slideshow for me and make sure you include X, Y, and Z. Let them use the tools that they've played with in their sandbox time to decide how they want to represent their knowledge to you. This is so important because it allows the student to buy in to what they're learning. It creates excitement for them. So make sure you're allowing voice and choice. The beginning of the year, the voice and choice may not be as big of a pull as the middle of the year or end of the year, but that sandbox time, We'll start giving them tools in their toolbox. Also, um, you're going to be given some different things for sandbox time. If you have questions about that, always mm -hmm. come and ask for ideas for sandbox time. Okay, know when to put the technology away. <laughs> you should never be using technology all day. And we all know that most kiddos these days, they are on the TV when they go home. They're on game stations when they go home. They're on computers when they go home. They're on cell phones. They're on tablets. They are so inundated with staring at a screen. Screens are too deep. We want to make sure our entire day is not focused at kids looking at a device. There are physical problems that they pop up because of that. That's one reason. Um, visual perception issues, we do not want to cause those in our students. So make sure you're not using the technology all day. When students um, are staring at one screen, they're not using their neck muscles correctly. They can start having visual perception issues um, where they're their head and body don't move, it's more, it's more of an eye just focusing in one spot. We want them to look up, look down, and transfer. If you want to learn more about visual perception, there's lots of information on the internet about that, and you can come and ask questions later. But that is one physical reason why we never want to use technology all day for our students. Another reason is technology is not you. You're the expert. You are the teacher, and you're amazing teachers. So. Your technology should not replace good instruction. They still need to hear it from you. They still need your singing, your dancing, your fun, along with their learning. The technology is just a tool to help them in, in, in using their technology to increase their learning capabilities and styles. Some of you already have been using our Chromebooks in the classrooms. Are there some things you already do 
to help with classroom management in your classroom with that technology pieces there? Are there some tips and tricks you already are using that you would want to share? For example, um, whenever you need your students' attentions, they're going to be, when they're using their technology, they're probably going to be quite engaged, and there will be times you need their attention. If it's a Chromebook like what we have now, you can come up with a quick little phrase for them to know it's time to look up or time to shut. Um, one tip and trick I've heard before is to say 45 so they know that their Chromebook needs to go at a 45 degree angle. This doesn't shut off their login to where they have to log in additionally after you're done talking. It just keeps the screen to where it's not visible. So you could do, great way to teach angles also, you could do 45, 90. Then they will be learning angles in the process, but that 45 can be just a quick, simple, Tilt your screen, I need your attention. You'll come up with your own phrase, I'm sure, but that's just one idea. Does anyone else have any ideas about managing the technology when it's in your classroom, even now, when you have the Chromebooks there? How about logging in? Does anyone have issues with students logging in? What do you do when your students have problems logging in? Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> okay, how about, here's where those experts can come in place again. Thank you so much. Where those experts come into play again. Expert students. So make sure you're using them. Um, also, how about a troubleshooting sheet for students to have made available to them? It will probably need to be on a piece of paper because if they're having difficulty logging in, it can't be on a drive doc. So maybe something like check your cat blocks, check the spelling, have a neighbor check your spelling. A lot of times our kiddos have issues spelling the word students, have it posted somewhere for them. Little classroom management things like that, uh, that will come in handy and you will naturally figure out. Also when these kiddos start taking their devices home on a daily basis, that login is going to be a worry of the past. They are going to be so excited about using the technology that they'll become experts at logging in. Okay, digital citizenship. We're gonna be teaching a lot of digital citizenship, especially since this technology will be going home with them. We need them to hear the teacher's voice in their ear while they're at home about safety and digital citizenship, how to stay safe with your technology. So that'll be a big piece, a big role that you'll be playing next year for your students. Questions? 